Ghana's run at the 2010 World Cup remains arguably the greatest performance in history by an African side on the biggest stage in football. The Black Stars reached the quarterfinals before that infamous Luis Suarez handball prevented a winner in the final minute of extra time, Asamoah Gyan skied the resulting penalty, and they went on to lose in the penalty shootout. Let's take a look at that team that achieved this feat and see where their careers took them. Richard Kingston, Ghana goalkeeping coach. Richard Kingston started every game between the sticks in South Africa. The shortstopper was at Wigan at the time of the World Cup, but left following the tournament to join Blackpool for their iconic Premier League season, but he left them following their relegation. He then ended up playing only 23 games in four years in Cyprus, Turkey and his native Ghana, and the reason for this was because supposedly his wife called upon spirits to ruin Kingston's career and render him impotent. I'm not joking. Anyway, following retirement, he spent two years coaching Ghana's national goalkeepers before being sacked. He then took on the same role with Ghana A, the national team only opened to domestic players, gave up on that after two months, and returned to the actual national team. Hans Sarpe, social media icon. Hans Sarpe was 33 at the time of the tournament, and he was plying his trade in Germany with Bayer Leverkusen, who he would leave after the World Cup to join Schalke. He retired after two years in Gelsenkirchen and a solid career as a whole in Germany. Sarpe then moved into media work, with his first role being in the movie Three Türken und ein Baby, and he hosted Germany's version of the show Ultimate Beastmaster years later. In a more fitting context to his career, he was also the star of TV show Das Tistet für Coach, a show where he would go around and coach a bunch of random Sunday league teams. He now spends his time advocating against racism, and he claims on his own website that he is a social media icon due to the Chuck Norris memes about him. Superstar. John Mensah, nobody knows. John Mensah was Ghana's captain who missed their third penalty against Uruguay, and he had an underwhelming career after 2010. He was in the midst of a two-year loan at Sunderland, and in the 10-11 season he picked up several injuries which more or less ruined his career. He only managed to play 28 games in the six years following the World Cup, before retiring in 2016 after playing for AFC Eskilstuna in the Swedish second division. After that, well, nobody seems to know what happened to him, he stayed out of the public eye. All I could find about his life outside football is that he got divorced in 2012, so um... Swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Jonathan Mensah, Columbus Crew. Partnering John Mensah at centre-back for the majority of the tournament was Jonathan Mensah. No, they aren't related. Jonathan joined Udinese in January 2010, but he never played for them, so he went and joined Evian in France, where he wandered face-first into controversy. He was banned from playing for four months after it was discovered that he claimed to be a free agent when he joined Evian, but he was legally still under contract with Udinese. He had a brief stint in Russia after his ban, and then moved to Columbus Crew in 2017 where he still plays today, and he actually captains the American side. He's also a role model off the pitch, with the Jonathan Mensah Foundation seeking to provide support to underprivileged kids in Ghana, with his main GoFundMe campaign trying to help children commute to school easier. What a good man. John Paintsill, Kaiser Chiefs Assistant Manager. A versatile player, John Paintsill was deployed as a right-back for this tournament. He was at Fulham at the time before leaving for Leicester a year later where he didn't play much, so he ended up playing for Hapoel Tel Aviv, Santos and Maritzburg United in the years that followed, before he retired in 2016. In the midst of all this, he was practically driven into never visiting Ghana again. He received death threats following an incident in 2013 in which he stabbed his wife and assaulted his neighbour in one night. Anyway, after some jail time, that controversy all more or less faded away, and he's now the assistant coach at South African club Kaiser Chiefs, a role he's had since his retirement as a player. Anthony Annan, free agent. Anthony Annan was Ghana's anchorman, coming into the starting eleven as a makeweight for the injured Michael Essien who couldn't recover for the tournament. Annan was quite an unknown at the time as he was playing for Rosenborg in Norway, but he slotted in seamlessly and seriously impressed. He saw out the season with Rosenborg before making a big move to Schalke where he flopped, and from then on he became a bit of a journeyman around Europe. He played for the likes of Osasuna, Helsinki, and most recently Inter Turku, where he left this January and is now a free agent at age 35. Quadro Asamoa, free agent. Now for the most successful player on this list, it's utility man Quadro Asamoa who played in the middle of the park for Ghana. Asamoa was in the midst of a spell at Udinese during the tournament where he left for Juventus in 2012. He won 13 trophies at the Bianconeri, becoming somewhat of a cult hero amongst the Juve fans before leaving for Inter Milan in 2018. Asamoah played 77 games for Inter in three seasons and ran down his contract before moving to Cagliari in February 2021 where he played half a season, left and he's been unattached since. He's now rumoured to be possibly making a return to football with Arsenal, and if that happens, his title of most decorated player will certainly cease to exist. Kevin Prince Boateng, Hertha Berlin. 
Moving on from the most decorated player to the player who played for the most decorated clubs, it's Asamoah's midfield partner Kevin Prince Boateng. The flashy midfielder had just finished up a season at Portsmouth where he seemed more interested in verbal altercations with Michael Ballack than actually playing football, but an impressive World Cup performance caught the eye of AC Milan, where he scored some of the greatest goals the Champions League has ever seen. Following Milan, he played for a whole host of top clubs like Schalke, Besiktas and Barcelona, and he's now returned to Hertha Berlin where it all began for him. Off the pitch, he launched a rap career under the name Prin Dollar Sign Dollar Sign Boating, but I feel like that failed given the fact that he's only got two songs on Spotify. I actually gave him a quick listen, and well, um, I'm actually quite happy he stuck to playing football. Andre Ayu, Al Sad. On the left wing there was Andre Ayu, who came from a lineage of successful footballers, with his father being Abedi Pele and brother being Jordan Ayu. Andre was establishing himself in France at the time of the World Cup, having just finished his third season at Marseille, where he stayed for another five years before departing for England. He played for West Ham and Swansea, and it was in Wales where he truly shone, but their relegation forced him to leave. He went on an unsuccessful loan to Fenerbahce, and now plays for Al Saad in Qatar, no doubt raking in fat stacks, and he's now the captain of the Ghana national football team, who flopped in Cameroon this AFCON. Prince Tago, Pundit On the opposite wing we had Prince Tago, a beanpole striker who was deployed on the wing by Milovan Rajevac. Now, Tego had a very unorthodox journeyman career. At the time, he was in the middle of a two-year spell at Hoffenheim where he played 20 games, left, and then played 22 games in eight years in countries like Israel, Malaysia, and most recently Bangladesh where he had his contract terminated by Chittagong Abahani because he was that unfit. What a bizarre career. Anyway, he seemed to retire in 2019 and he's now a pundit for Angel TV in Ghana where he seems to live off of slagging off the national team. Asamoah Gyan, free agent slash tennis player. Asamoah Gyan was Ghana's star of the tournament, but he'll forever be remembered for missing the penalty that would have sent Ghana to the semi-finals. It only got worse for Gyan, who left Rennes that summer for Sunderland, where he was good for a season, left, and then decided to soak up money in the UAE, China, and India, before most recently playing for League On Cities in Ghana. He's a free agent at the minute and he's been eyeing a return to football, but that's not to say he hasn't been busy in the meantime. Gian started Baby Jet Airlines, which is ready to launch into Ghanaian skies but been delayed due to Covid, and most recently he won a tennis doubles tournament with his brother in December. Jack of all trades. Milovan Rijevac, unemployed. Finally, there was manager Milovan Rijevac, your typical Eastern European journeyman manager. The Serb left Ghana after the World Cup, and he managed teams in Saudi Arabia and Slovenia, as well as taking the helmet national sides such as Qatar, Algeria and Thailand. Most recently, he took control of Ghana once more AFCON 2021, but he got sacked after Ghana was shocking and they were eliminated in the group stage. Sully Montari, Hearts of Oak I can't complete this without mentioning Ghana's goalscorer in the semi-finals, Sully Montari. The midfielder couldn't consistently dislodge Boateng and Asamoah in the middle of the park, but despite World Cup disappointment, he ended up playing for both Milan sides and a smattering of other Italian teams. He's just returned to Ghana, joining Hearts of Oak after a three-year footballing hiatus. On to some more obscure stories within the squad. There was Samuel in Coombe, who got sued by his landlord while playing for DC United as he had damaged his property and hadn't paid rent. He then got banned by the Bulgarian Football Federation for a year because of this, and it was revealed that he caused 65,000 US dollars in damages. Ibrahim Ayu was also in the squad, and his family no doubt look on at him in disappointment as he plays in Gibraltar for Europa FC, while his brothers ball out in the top leagues. Centre-back Lee Addy was found to actually be five years older than he said on his World Cup documents. In 2009, he had documents stating he was born in September 1985, but magically, when the World Cup came, he was now born in July 1990. No one even followed this up, he got away with it. Dominic Adeyea, who missed Ghana's fourth penalty, had the biggest fall of all. He joined AC Milan after the tournament, but he was playing in Kazakhstan within four years. Finally, Quincy Owusu Abayi is a name you might recognise after he became a cult hero amongst many when he was featured on KSI's Beast series in FIFA 12. Speaking of KSI, Quincy is cousins with English rapper Sway, who you might remember from the song No Sleep which featured the YouTuber. Quincy also followed in Kevin Prince Boateng's footsteps by launching a rap career under the name Blow. He's yet to blow up. He's retired if you couldn't tell. Anyway, from stabbings to rapping, that's all the best I could find about Ghana's iconic 2010 World Cup squad. What was the most interesting story in your eyes? Comment below. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.